Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Growth Mindset Company channel. I'm Shravan Kumar, your go-to MEP and contract expert. If you're passionate about the construction industry or looking to deepen your understanding of how it all works here in India, you're in the right place. Today, we're diving into a crucial topic that forms the backbone of our nation's infrastructure development, the various types of construction contracts and the legal frameworks that govern them. Understanding these contracts is essential, not just for industry professionals, but for anyone interested in the complexities of building the structures that shape our world. So, grab a cup of coffee, settle in, and let's explore the fascinating world of construction contracts in India. The construction industry in India is a cornerstone of the nation's economy, contributing significantly to its gross domestic product GDP and providing employment to millions. It encompasses a vast array of projects, including residential buildings, commercial complexes, infrastructure development and industrial facilities. Given the diversity and complexity of these projects, well-structured contracts are essential to define the roles, responsibilities and obligations of all parties involved. Contracts not only facilitate smooth project execution, but also minimize risks and disputes, thereby contributing to the overall growth and sustainability of the construction sector. In India, while international contract standards like FIDIC, Federation International des Ingenieurs Conseil, are used, especially in projects with international stakeholders, the country has developed its own set of contracts and legal frameworks tailored to its unique legal environment, market conditions and construction practices. This comprehensive guide delves into the primary types of construction contracts and legal frameworks prevalent in India, offering detailed insights into their features, applications and significance in the industry. The Indian Institute of Architects, IIA, founded in 1917, is a cornerstone organization that shapes the architectural profession in India. With a history spanning over a century, the IIA not only promotes architectural excellence, but also provides standardized tools and frameworks to streamline the profession. One of its most significant contributions is the IOA standard form of contract, a critical document for formalizing agreements between architects, clients and contractors. This contract clarifies roles, responsibilities and expectations, ensuring smooth project execution and reducing potential disputes. Why was the IIA standard form of contract created? Historically, architectural projects in India often faced challenges like scope creep, payment disagreements and confusion over intellectual property rights. This lack of clarity made it difficult to maintain professional relationships and ensure project success. The IIA recognized these issues and took the initiative to create a standardized contract that addressed these pain points. Thus, the IIA standard form of contract was developed to 1. Ensure transparency in the professional relationship between architects, clients and contractors. 2. Provide a clear framework for payment terms, responsibilities and project timelines. 3. Protect the intellectual property rights of architects while ensuring clients' needs are met. Breaking down the key features and provisions. 1. Scope of architectural services. The contract meticulously defines the scope of services provided by the architect, typically divided into three main, cate main categories. Design and planning. This phase covers everything from initial design concepts to detailed drawings and specifications that serve as the blueprint for the project. Consultation and supervision includes regular site visits, quality checks and coordination with other stakeholders to ensure that the project adheres to the design intent. Documentation, preparation of documents needed for various approvals and permits from local authorities. Two, roles and responsibilities. Each party's obligations are clearly outlined to avoid ambiguity. Architect, expected to deliver services with utmost professionalism, adhere to industry standards and maintain client confidentiality. Client, must provide comprehensive project requirements, approve designs in a timely manner and ensure payments are made as per the agreed schedule. Contractor, responsible for executing the construction as per the architect's designs and specifications. PAP 3, Payment Terms and Fee Structure. 
The IIA standard form of contract offers flexibility in structuring payments which can be customized based on project needs. Professional fees calculated as a percentage of project cost, a lump sum amount, or based on hourly rates depending on the agreement. Reimbursable expenses includes costs for travel, printing, and other project-related expenses which are billed separately. Payment schedule linked to specific project milestones, ensuring that payments are aligned with project progress and cash flow requirements. Four, project timeline and deliverables. Works get specifies detailed timelines for each phase from design to project completion. Delays and extensions includes provisions for deadline extensions due to unforeseen circumstances, dis ensuring that project delays are managed without disputes. Um, Publify variations and changes. During any construction project, changes are inevitable. The IA contract provides a structured process for managing these changes. Change orders allows for amendments to the original design or scope provided both parties agree. Cost implications, adjustments in fees and timelines are documented to reflect the impact of these changes. Six, intellectual property rights. The architect's designs are their intellectual property. The contract specifies ownership of designs. The architect retains copyright over all designs while the client receives a license to use them for the specific project. Restrictions on reuse prevents clients from using the designs on other projects without the architect's consent. Hammer 7. Liabilities and insurance. The contract covers liability and insurance requirements to safeguard all parties. Professional liability. The architect is liable for any errors or omissions in their work. Insurance requirements. Professional indemnity insurance is mandated to cover potential claims. 8. Dispute resolution. Disputes are addressed proactively to avoid lengthy legal battles. Amicable settlement. Parties are encouraged to resolve disputes through negotiation. Arbitration. In case negotiations fail, disputes are referred to arbitration as per the Arbitration and Conciliation Act 1996. Ha! 9. Termination clauses. Termination provisions protect both the architect and the client. Termination by architect specifies conditions under which the architect can terminate the agreement, such as non-payment. Termination by client lists circumstances that allow the client to end the contract, such as breach of obligations. Impact on the industry. The IIA standard form of contract has become a benchmark in the Indian architectural industry, promoting transparency and professionalism. It sets a high standard for contractual practices, ensuring that projects are executed smoothly and disputes are minimized. Its adaptability makes it suitable for projects of all scales, from small residential designs to large commercial developments. Keeping up with changes. The IIA regularly updates the contract to keep pace with evolving industry trends, legal amendments, and technological advancements. Architects and clients are advised to always refer to the latest version to ensure that their agreements are compliant with current standards and regulations. Conclusion. The IIA standard form of contract is more than just a legal document. It is a tool that fosters collaboration, trust, and clarity in the complex world of architectural projects. By defining roles, safeguarding intellectual property and outlining a clear payment structure, it ensures that both architects and clients can work together towards a successful project outcome. The Indian Roads Congress IRC, is the principal body for road and highway engineers in India, shaping the country's road infrastructure since its establishment in 1934. With the rapid growth of road construction and maintenance activities post-independence, the need for a standardized approach to project execution became essential. In response, the IRC developed its standard form of contracts, which provide a structured framework tailored specifically to the unique challenges of road and bridge projects in India. The purpose behind IRC's standard form of contracts. The rapid expansion of India's road network post-independence created a demand for robust construction practices, efficient project management, and a consistent approach to quality control. The IRC standard form of contracts was designed to achieve these objectives by 1. Establishing a uniform framework for project execution and management. 2. Ensuring the quality and durability of road infrastructure through standardized specifications. 
3. Promoting safety, sustainability, and effective risk management in road construction projects. Key features and provisions of the IRC standard form of contracts. 1. Technical specifications. IRC's contracts are built on a strong foundation of technical guidelines to ensure quality and consistency. Material standards. Detailed specifications for the types and quality of materials used, including aggregates, bitumen, concrete, and reinforcement steel. Construction techniques. Standardized methods for road laying, bridge construction, and maintenance to ensure structural integrity and longevity. These specifications ensure that all projects, whether for national highways or rural roads, adhere to a common set of technical parameters. LAR 2. Quality Control Quality is a top priority in IRC contracts, which incorporate comprehensive quality control measures. Testing Procedures The contract outlines specific tests, e.g., compaction tests for soil, compressive strength tests for concrete, to be conducted at various stages of construction. Compliance Checks Routine inspections are mandated to monitor adherence to technical specifications and workmanship standards. This focus on quality control minimizes defects and enhances the safety and reliability of the road network. 3. Environmental Considerations Sustainability is increasingly a focus in infrastructure projects, and the IRC contracts reflect this shift. Sustainability Practices Emphasis on using eco-friendly construction materials and technologies such as recycled aggregates and low-emission machinery. Mitigation measures. Provisions to address environmental impacts, including erosion control, waste management, and the protection of local ecosystems. This ensures that road projects not only contribute to connectivity, but also promote environmental stewardship. 4. Safety standards. Safety, both for workers and the public, the is a key element in IRC's contract provisions. Worker safety. Guidelines for personal protective equipment, safe handling of hazardous materials, and emergency response protocols. Public safety. Measures like signage, barricades, and detours to protect road users during construction. These protocols are critical to preventing accidents and ensuring that projects are executed without compromising the safety of those involved. 5. Project Management Effective project management is central to successful road construction. The IRC standard form of contracts includes Scheduling Comprehensive project timelines that outline key milestones, expected completion dates, and buffer periods for unexpected delays. Reporting mechanisms Regular progress reports are required to keep all stakeholders informed and facilitate timely decision-making. This structured approach helps keep projects on track and within budget. 6. Financial Provisions Financial clarity is essential for smooth project execution. The IRC contracts address this through Payment Terms Clearly defined schedules linked to project milestones, such as completion of earthworks, laying of base courses, or final pavement layers. Price Escalation Clauses Provisions to account for inflation, fluctuating material costs, or changes in labor rates, protecting contractors and clients from unforeseen financial pressures. This ensures fair compensation and reduces financial disputes. 7. Risk Management Given the scale and complexity of road projects, effective risk management is crucial. Force majeure, provisions for natural disasters, political disruptions, or other unforeseeable events specifying how such situations will be handled. Liability clauses, clear allocation of responsibilities in case of defects, delays, or accidents, reducing ambiguity and potential legal disputes. These clauses provide a safety net for all parties, allowing for smooth handling of unexpected situations. 8. Dispute Resolution Like any large-scale infrastructure project, road construction can encounter disputes. The IRC contracts outline Mediation Encourages resolving disputes through negotiation and mutual agreement before escalating to formal proceedings. Arbitration Provides a clear procedure for arbitration in line with the Arbitration and Conciliation Act, 1996, if disputes cannot be resolved amicably. This structured approach minimizes the time and cost associated with resolving conflicts. Application in road projects across India. The IRC standard form of contracts is utilized in a wide range of road construction projects, including 1. National Highways, ensuring adherence to the highest standards of quality and safety. 
Two, state and rural roads, providing a uniform approach to project execution, even in remote areas. Three, urban infrastructure, addressing the specific challenges of road projects in densely populated areas, such as traffic management and environmental impact. The use of these contracts has contributed significantly to the development of a reliable and resilient road network across the country. Regular updates and revisions. The IRC continuously updates its standard form of contracts to reflect technological advancements, incorporation of new construction techniques and materials, international best practices, aligning with global standards to enhance the quality and sustainability of road projects, legal and regulatory changes, adjusting provisions to comply with the latest regulations and legal requirements. This dynamic approach ensures that IRC contracts remain relevant and effective in addressing the evolving needs of India's road infrastructure. Conclusion. The IRC standard form of contracts is more than just a set of legal documents. It's a strategic framework that promotes efficiency, safety, and quality in India's road construction industry. By establishing clear technical standards, robust quality control measures, and comprehensive risk management strategies, these contracts ensure that road projects are completed on time, within budget, and to the highest standards of safety and durability. For any organization involved in road construction or maintenance, the IRC contracts are indispensable tools for project success. What is the Public Works Department? The Public Works Department, or PWD, is a government agency responsible for the planning, construction, and maintenance of infrastructure projects across India. Each state and union territory has its own PWD, overseeing the development of government buildings, roads, and other essential infrastructure. These projects are pivotal for the development of any region, and PWD contracts play a critical role in ensuring their successful execution. So let's break down how PWD contracts work, the key features, and what makes them so vital for public sector projects. Key functions of PWD. PWD's role goes beyond just building roads. It's involved one, infrastructure development, planning and executing large-scale projects like highways, public hospitals, and educational institutions. Two, maintenance, ensuring the longevity and functionality of existing infrastructure. Three, technical expertise, providing the technical know-how, including engineering and architectural services for complex public works. Understanding PWD contracts. PWD contracts are detailed and structured to meet public sector requirements. Let's look at some of their key features. One, tendering process, public notices. Every PWD contract begins with a public notice, an open invitation for contractors to bid, ensuring transparency. Pre-qualification, not just anyone can bid. Contractors go through a rigorous screening process based on their experience and financial capability. Bid evaluation. Both technical and financial proposals are assessed to select the best candidate, ensuring that public funds are used efficiently. Two, detailed specifications. PWD contracts are known for their precision. They include material quality, Standards are strictly defined, so contractors can't compromise on quality. Workmanship. There are clear guidelines for construction practices, ensuring projects are built to last. Three, bill of quantities. This is a breakdown of all the items required in a project. It includes itemized costs, listing out costs for materials, labor, and equipment, measurement methods. PWD contracts use standardized methods to measure work done, so there's no ambiguity when it comes to payment. Four, payment schedules. Payments are structured to maintain cash flow throughout the project. Interim payments. Regular payments are made based on project milestones. Final settlement. The remaining amount is paid only after the project is completed and all conditions are met. Five, performance guarantees. Contractors are required to provide financial guarantees to ensure compliance. Security deposits, a safety net for the government if the contractor fails to meet obligations. Retention money, a percentage of payment held back until the defect liability period ends, ensuring the quality of the work. Time management and risk allocation. PWD contracts are strict when it comes to timelines. Contractors face penalties for delays unless time extensions are justified under special clauses. Risk allocation is another crucial aspect. 
with clearly defined responsibilities for both parties. Contractor risks, material shortages, labor issues, or equipment failures. Employer risks, delays in site handover or payment defaults. Dispute resolution. Given the complexity of these projects, disputes are common. PWD contracts address this through. Dispute review boards, panels to resolve issues early on. Arbitration, for disputes that can't be settled through review boards. Importance of PWD contracts. PWD contracts are designed to ensure transparency, accountability, and efficiency. By adhering to strict guidelines, these contracts help maintain public trust and ensure that taxpayer money is used effectively. Challenges and considerations. But managing PWD contracts isn't without its challenges. One, bureaucratic procedures. The complex approval processes can cause delays. Two, standardization issues. Each state PWD has its own way of doing things, leading to inconsistencies. Three, corruption risks. Strict adherence to protocols is crucial to prevent malpractices. PWD contracts are the backbone of public infrastructure development in India. Understanding how they work is essential for anyone involved in construction, engineering, or government procurement. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. EPC Contracts. If you're curious about how massive projects like highways, metro systems, or power plants are executed seamlessly, then you're in the right place. So let's unpack the world of engineering, procurement, and construction EPC contracts and explore why they are becoming the go-to choice for large-scale infrastructure projects. What are EPC contracts? EPC stands for Engineering, Procurement, and Construction. It's a type of contract where a single entity, the EPC contractor, is responsible for delivering a complete operational facility within a specified time and budget. Think of it as a turnkey solution for large projects, where the client can simply turn the key once the facility is ready to use. With an EPC contract, the client has a single point of contact, making project management simpler and reducing the hassle of coordinating multiple contractors. The scope of EPC contracts. EPC contractors take on a comprehensive set of responsibilities, including 1. Design and engineering, taking charge of all design aspects from the conceptual stage to detailed engineering. 2. Procurement, sourcing and purchasing all necessary materials, equipment and services required for the project. 3. Construction, executing all construction activities, ensuring the facility is built according to specifications. Once these three elements are completed, the contractor must also commission the project, ensuring it meets all operational requirements. It's like building a house and handing over the keys when it's fully furnished, connected to utilities, and ready to live in. Key features of EPC contracts. Let's break down the main features of EPC contracts and what makes them unique. One, single point of responsibility. With EPC, the contractor takes on end-to-end -end responsibility for the project. This means design and engineering. All aspects of the project's design are handled by the contractor, leaving little room for the client's intervention. Procurement. The contractor is in charge of sourcing and buying everything needed for the project. Construction. From breaking ground to final finishing, the contractor is accountable for everything. This eliminates confusion about who is responsible for what, streamlining communication, and reducing the potential for disputes. Two, fixed contract price. One of the standout features of EPC contracts is that they usually have a fixed contract price. Cost certainty. Once the contract is signed, the price is set. The contractor bears the risk of any cost overruns. Budget management. This incentivizes the contractor to manage costs efficiently and avoid unexpected expenses. Three, time-bound completion. EPC contracts are notorious for their strict deadlines. Schedule adherence. There are penalties for delays pushing contractors to stick to the agreed timeline. Milestone tracking. Progress is measured against predefined milestones, ensuring transparency and accountability. Hacker 4. Performance guarantees. The contractor is not just responsible for building the project, but also for making sure it operates as intended. Quality standards. There are strict specifications for materials and workmanship. Operational criteria. The facility must meet certain performance parameters, such as production capacity or energy efficiency. Risk allocation in EPC contracts. Another crucial aspect is risk allocation. In an EPC contract, most risks are shouldered by the contractor, 
Let's break it down. Contractor risks includes errors in design, procurement issues, and delays in construction. If the project encounters these problems, the contractor is liable for rectifying them. Client risks. These are typically limited to changes in government regulations or force majeure events like natural disasters. Payment terms and conditions. EPC contracts also have well-defined payment structures. Milestone payments. Payments are linked to the completion of specific project stages, ensuring the contractor is compensated only for the work completed. Retention money. A portion of each payment is held back until the project successfully passes the warranty period, ensuring the contractor remains committed to quality even after delivery. Managing variations and change orders. During long-term projects, changes are inevitable. That's where provisions for variations and change orders come in. Scope changes. If the client wants to make changes, there are clear procedures for managing these requests. Cost adjustments. If changes lead to additional costs, mechanisms are in place to adjust the contract price accordingly. Advantages of EPC contracts. Now, why are EPC contracts so popular in India? Here are a few reasons. One, efficiency. With a single entity managing everything, the project timelines are often shorter. Two, cost savings. Contra contractors can leverage economies of scale, especially in procurement, to reduce overall costs. Three, clear accountability. Since one party is responsible for the entire project, disputes and misunderstandings are minimized. Applications of EPC contracts in India. EPC contracts are used extensively across various sectors. Infrastructure projects, highways, bridges, airports, and metro systems. Energy sector. Power plants, renewable energy installations like solar and wind farms. Industrial facilities, manufacturing plants, refineries, and processing facilities. Challenges in EPC contracts. However, managing an EPC contract isn't always smooth sailing. Here are some challenges. 1. Contract complexity. The agreement must cover all possible scenarios, making it highly detailed and sometimes overwhelming. 2. Contractor capability. The success of an EPC contract hinges on the contractor's expertise and resources. 3. Risk exposure. Since most of the risks are transferred to the contractor, pricing can be higher to account for these uncertainties. EPC contracts are transforming the way large-scale projects are executed in India. By providing a single point of responsibility and clear accountability, they offer a streamlined approach to complex projects. However, success in EPC contracts relies heavily on choosing the right contractor with the right expertise and resources. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, like, and subscribe. Let us know in the comments if there's a specific topic related to contracts or project management that you'd like us to cover next. The Build Operate Transfer, BOP, and Public Private Partnership, PPP contracts. If you've ever wondered how massive projects like highways, airports, or metro rail systems are developed, stay tuned because we're breaking down how these models work, their benefits, and the challenges they present. 1. What are BOT and PPP contracts? Let's start with some definitions to set the foundation. BOT contracts. In a BOT model, a private entity takes on the responsibility to build the infrastructure, operate it for a specific period to recoup its investment, and then transfer it back to the government. Think of it as the private sector playing a temporary role as both the builder and caretaker before handing over the keys to the public. PPP contracts. Public-private partnerships are a bit broader. It's a collaboration where both the government and private companies share resources, risks, and returns to deliver public project. This framework allows for flexibility in terms of funding, operations, and risk sharing compared to a traditional contract. Key features and provisions of BOT and PPP contracts. These contracts stand out due to some specific features. Private sector involvement. Investment. The private entity finances the construction and operation, reducing the burden on public funds. Expertise. The private partner brings in efficiency, innovation, and project management skills, making projects faster and often more cost-effective. Concession periods. The private entity operates the project for a fixed concession period. This is the duration where they're responsible for running and maintaining it, earning back their investment through revenues. Revenue models. In bot-type projects, revenue often comes from user charges. 
tolls on highways, tariffs at ports, or fees in airports. In PPPs, revenue can be more diversified, including annuity payments from the government or viability gap funding, VGF, which is a subsidy to ensure the project's financial feasibility. And three, risk sharing and regulatory oversight. Risk sharing is a crucial component in both models. The goal is to allocate risks to the party best suited to manage them. For instance, construction risks, generally borne by the private entity, regulatory and political risks, shared or handled by the government. Moreover, to ensure that these projects serve the public interest, regulatory oversight is stringent. Performance monitoring. The government closely watches operations to ensure compliance. Tariff regulation. Prices such as toll rates or user fees are often regulated to protect public interests. Four, real-world applications in India. India has successfully utilized BIAT and PPP models for various large-scale projects. Highways, national highways and state roads developed under the BOT model. Airports, modernization and operation of airports like those in Delhi and Mumbai. Urban infrastructure, metro systems, water supply projects, and smart city initiatives have been launched under the PPP framework. Five, benefits of BOT and PPP models. These models are crucial for driving infrastructure growth without putting excessive pressure on public funds. Some of the major benefits include resource optimization, mobilizes private capital and expertise, innovation, encourages the adoption of cutting edge technology and practices, economic growth, faster infrastructure development leads to more jobs and economic opportunities. Six, challenges in implementing BOT and PPP projects. Despite their benefits, these models aren't without challenges, complex negotiations. Structuring a contract that balances interests, risk, and reward takes time and effort. Regulatory hurdles. India's legal and bureaucratic landscape can slow down progress. Public acceptance. Managing expectations and opposition from stakeholders can be tricky. The BOT and PPP models are powerful tools that help India build world-class infrastructure by leveraging private expertise and funding. However, they require meticulous planning, clear risk allocation, and constant regulatory oversight to ensure they serve the public interest. So, what's your take on these models? Do you think they're the right way forward for large-scale projects in India? Let us know in the comments below. We're diving deep into one of the most crucial regulations that has reshaped the Indian real estate landscape, the Real Estate Regulation and Development Act, or RERA 2016. Whether you're a home buyer, investor, or a real estate developer, RERA impacts you directly. So in this video, we'll break down its objectives, key provisions, and the impact it has on real estate contracts. Let's get started. Why was RERA enacted? Before RERA, the real estate sector in India was like the Wild West, unregulated and chaotic. Buyers often faced issues like delayed projects, hidden charges, and false promises. RERA was introduced to address these problems and bring transparency, accountability, and fairness to the sector. Let's look at the core objectives of this act. 1. Consumer protection. RERA safeguards home buyers from unethical practices by enforcing strict regulations on developers. 2. Transparency. It mandates full disclosure of project details, including timelines, land status, and approval updates. 3. Financial discipline. RERA regulates how developers use funds, minimizing the risk of delays. 4. Dispute resolution. Provides a clear mechanism for resolving conflicts quickly and efficiently. Key provisions of RERA. Now that we know why RERA was enacted, let's explore some of its key provisions that developers and agents must comply with. 1. Mandatory registration. All real estate projects exceeding a specific size must be registered under RERA before any promotion or sale. Even real estate agents need to register to operate legally, ensuring that everyone in the chain is accountable. 2. Transparency requirements. Developers are required to disclose detailed project plans, approvals, and the current status of land. Regular updates on construction progress must be provided to buyers, keeping them in the loop. 3. Financial discipline. RERA mandates that developers must maintain separate bank accounts for each project. At least 70% of the funds collected from buyers must be used exclusively for construction, preventing diversion of funds. 4. Timely delivery. One of the biggest pain points for buyers has been project delays. 
With Rara, developers must stick to their promised timelines. Any delay will result in penalties or compensation to the buyer. 5. Standardization of contracts. Rara promotes the use of model agreements to bring uniformity and fairness in contracts. It prohibits developers from inserting unfair clauses that put buyers at a disadvantage. 6. Grievance redressal. If any issues arise, buyers can approach state-level Rara authorities to lodge a complaint. Additionally, there are appellate tribunals for appeals against the decisions of Rara authorities. Impact on real estate contracts. Rara has redefined how contracts in the real estate sector are drafted and enforced. Here's what has changed. 1. Enhanced buyer confidence. Buyers now have legal backing for every promise made by the developer, leading to increased trust. 2. Developer accountability. Developers can no longer get away with false commitments or misuse of funds. 3. Legal compliance. All contracts must now align with RERA's provisions, look out, ensuring that developers and agents operate within a well-defined legal framework. Section 4. Challenges in implementing RERA. While RERA is a step in the right direction, its implementation hasn't been entirely smooth. Let's look at a few challenges. 1. Implementation variations. Each state has its own version of RERA, leading to inconsistencies in rules and enforcement. 2. Transition for developers. Many developers are still adjusting to the stringent compliance requirements, which has slowed down project launches in some areas. RERA 2016 is a landmark regulation that has made the real estate sector more transparent and buyer-friendly. If you're planning to invest in property or already own one, understanding RERA's provisions can help you make informed decisions and safeguard your interests. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button and share it with anyone looking to invest in real estate. Don't forget to subscribe for more such insightful videos on laws and regulations that affect your life. Today, we're diving deep into the Arbitration and Conciliation Act 1996, a critical piece of legislation that provides a robust framework for resolving disputes outside traditional courts in India. This act is particularly important for the construction industry, which often involves complex, high-value contracts that can give rise to disputes. Why is the Arbitration and Conciliation Act relevant? The purpose of this act is simple, yet powerful, to facilitate faster and more efficient dispute resolution. Construction contracts often incorporate arbitration clauses that refer to this act, offering a flexible mechanism to settle conflicts without burdening the court system. It's an approach designed to save time, reduce costs, and preserve business relationships. But what sets this act apart is its adaptability, it's aligned with international standards, making it especially relevant for cross-border projects and foreign investors. Understanding the purpose of the Act. 1. Efficient dispute resolution. The primary goal is to reduce the caseload of the courts and ensure timely dispute resolution, which is crucial for industries like construction where delays can be costly. 2. International alignment. It's based on the UNCITRAL model law, making it compatible with international arbitration norms. This helps Indian contracts gain global acceptance and trust. 3. Flexibility in procedures. The Act empowers the parties to tailor the arbitration process to their specific needs, whether it's about choosing the arbitrators or setting the procedural rules. Key provisions of the Act. Let's break down the core aspects of the Act that make it a powerful tool for construction contracts. Arbitration proceedings. The Act mandates that the proceedings must be fair and impartial, ensuring that both parties are given equal treatment and opportunities to present their case. 2. Procedural autonomy. Parties have the freedom to decide on the procedural aspects, including the venue, language and method of appointing arbitrators. 3. Appointment of arbitrators. Parties can decide on the number and qualifications of arbitrators based on the complexity of the dispute. If there's a deadlock, the court can step in to facilitate the appointment. 4. Enforcement of arbitral awards. Arbitral awards are binding and have the same effect as a court decree, making them enforceable. The grounds for challenging an award are limited to prevent unnecessary delays. The amendments, 2015 and 2019. Now let's look at the recent amendments that have strengthened the Act. 1. 2015 Amendment, Expedited Proceedings, introduced a fast-track mechanism to complete arbitration within six months. 
This is crucial for construction contracts where time is of the essence. Cost efficiency. Measures were introduced to reduce arbitration costs, making the process more accessible and predictable. 2. 2019 Amendment. Arbitration Council of India, set up to promote and regulate arbitration in India, enhancing the credibility of the process. Confidentiality. The amendment mandates that all proceedings remain confidential, which is beneficial for protecting sensitive business information. Relevance to construction contracts. The construction sector is known for its technical complexities and high-stake projects. Here's why the act is particularly relevant. 1. Complex disputes. It provides a specialized forum for resolving technical disputes, which are common in large-scale infrastructure projects. 2. International projects. With its alignment to global standards, the act is a boon for international players, encouraging foreign investment and partnerships. 3. Enforceability. It ensures that arbitral awards are enforceable in India, reducing the risk of prolonged litigation and ensuring smooth project execution. The Arbitration and Conciliation Act 1996, with its 2015 and 2019 amendments, is a pivotal tool for resolving disputes in the construction industry. It not only offers a reliable mechanism to resolve conflicts efficiently, but also aligns with international standards, making India a favourable destination for investment in infrastructure and construction. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe for more content and share your thoughts in the comments below. What's your experience with arbitration in construction contracts? Let us know. Before we wrap up, here are some additional construction contracts that are frequently used in India. 1. Federation International de Ingenieurs Conseil, FIDIC, contracts. Known for their global standards, FIDIC contracts are widely used in large-scale and international projects, providing a solid framework for complex construction agreements. 2. Institution of Civil Engineers, IC, contracts. Traditionally used in civil engineering works, these contracts are known for their emphasis on technical precision, making them ideal for infrastructure projects like roads and bridges. 3. Lump sum contracts, also known as fixed price contracts. In these contracts, the total cost is agreed upon at the start, ensuring cost stability and minimizing budget overruns. 4. National Highways Authority of India and Standard Contracts. Specifically designed for highway construction, these contracts include detailed provisions for specifications, timelines and maintenance obligations. 5. Model Concession Agreements, MCA. Frequently used in public-private partnerships, PPP, these agreements define terms for private investment in public infrastructure, ensuring clarity on revenue sharing and risk allocation. 6. Model agreements from professional bodies. Developed by institutions like the Indian Institute of Architects or Engineers, these agreements incorporate industry best practices and are tailored for various project needs. 7. Special Purpose Vehicle SPV agreements. Used in projects where a separate legal entity is created, SPVs help in managing project-specific risks and funding, particularly in large consortium-led ventures. These contracts complement the ones we've already discussed and provide more options for handling the diverse requirements of construction projects in India. Hope you found the information on the various construction contracts used in India valuable. If you'd like us to deep dive into any specific contract type or want more detailed content on a particular agreement, let us know in the comments below. Remember, your engagement makes a huge difference. Um, liking this video helps it reach more people and tells the YouTube algorithm that this content is valuable. And by subscribing to our channel, you'll be the first to get updates whenever we release new videos. We're here to provide content tailored to what you want to learn. So keep sharing your thoughts and suggestions in the comments. The construction industry is complex, but with the right information, we can navigate it confidently together. Um, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.